Greetings, fellow humans. Bad Mark here with another transmission from MechTech Keyboards. And today we're taking a look at a new keyboard from Zoya. Another one in the GMK series. We first met the GMK67, that's 65% with a knob. And then just recently met the GMK87, which is a TKL with a screener knob. Well, this is the GMK81, that's a 75%. No knob, but it does have a screen. So, taking a look at the box real quick, it did come a little bit beat up, but the keyboard, I checked it out, it does seem fine, so I think we'll be fine. They do have boxes to check off for different ISO configurations, though I've yet to see one. I know that there are people even waiting for an ISO version of the GMK67 and I, that I know there isn't one yet. If there is, please let me know in the comments down below. But we... They also have the boxes to check off for single color or rainbow or RGB as this one is. But they also have the colors for the cases that they have for the GMK67. Whether they're coming to these, probably right now they're just white and black. But if they sell at, you know, similar kind of numbers as the GMK67, I'm pretty sure we'll probably see those different colors start to become available. So there is also the GMK 67S, um, which has just been released, I believe in the last week or so. And it is a 65% without a knob, but it has a screen. So it's basically, I mean, it's the GMK 67-S for screen. So, um, so far, the cheapest I've found it is $45, being that I've gotten the GMK67 for as low as like $17, $18. And I've gotten the uh, the the GMK81, I, I paid like $28 for, and I got a second GMK87 because I was able to get it for like, I want to say $28 or $22, something like that. I don't know. So it's hard for me to justify, you know, paying a higher price when I know it'll be available soon but when I do have a chance when I find a good price on it I'll pick it up and I will bring you that review so let's go ahead jump into it and see what we've got all right so we do have a bit of a longer manual though it is in two different languages but it confirms that it's a via trimo TFT LCD mechanical keyboard um, and from what I understand I will confirm this here in a minute that it uses um, a different via file, but it uses the same custom update tool that the GMK87 uses, and I would assume the GMK67S uses as well. We have a wire key switch and key cap puller, as well as a USB-A to USB-C nylon braided, decent cable actually. I, I quite, I, I like the nylon. Um, the ones that are braided that have the nylon braiding cover and here we are with the gmk 81 fresh out of the box i got it in black i i kind of forgotten what color i'd gotten in for a minute because i got the gmk 87 and white now i have the black one coming so this is black one i'm guessing probably when i get the uh gmk 67s i'll probably get it in white but who knows it probably depend on how I'm feeling that day. So, one thing I have heard a lot about uh, from folks is with the newer versions of the GMK67 and these newer keyboards that have come out now, the GMK87, the GMK81, um, and I guess the same with the GMK67S. Um, they have a PT layer, PT mod um, sheet between the IXPE phone and the PCB where it belongs. Thing is, it's not like most of the ones that come with it that have the holes already punched out. So in this case, um, you'll actually see that not only do we not have the holes punched out for the plastic in the middle. Now there's one there. Oh. Looks like somebody tried to stick a switch in there because there's actually holes in there. But even the IXPE foam does not have 
the punch outs already. So now most pins will go through the other ones, but I highly recommend just going through. I like to use a plastic spudger, that way I don't have to worry about puncturing battery or anything underneath. Um, and obviously don't use much force. It's not gonna, you know, it's just don't press too hard. It's pretty easy. Punching out that center post ensures that the rest of the pins are gonna go in there nice and easy. All right, now that we've done that, one of the things I like to do, just because that's, I've, I've been messing with certain type of OLED or TFT displays for a while. Um, this is usually, um, there's only a couple of boards I've seen that actually use glass. And when they use glass, it still feels like they're using a very soft glass because it can get scratched really easy. I always like to go ahead and take out my calipers and just do a rough measurement of the screen. So once I have a piece of the screen protector cut out, you know, close, go ahead and take the adhesive protector off and take this orange TV sticker uh, to replace it at a later date. But right now I know at least I'm going to have that protected. The next thing, this is what I'm recommending for folks getting um, either any of the GMK series really at this point because especially if you're using three pins though I'd recommend at least loading up for the first time five pin switches if you have them that way it's going to go ahead and make all the holes for it but because this is such a flexi plate and it's such a flexi cut I recommend that it be done holding it so to open this up it looks like it's going to be very similar to uh, the GMK 87. Uh, these have more of that, that blocky design, not necessarily the rounded bevels like the GMK does, where uh, there's a different way to open the GMK, and I have a video. I mean, you basically just want to go in between the two halves, go in and then press either up or down to start sliding along the perimeter of the case to open it up. But for these, we basically just have the clips that are going along the edge. So we want to make a little gap in there and get our spudger. All right. And then just start going around the perimeter. I don't know. Don't pull it yet, though. You want to get all of the clips undone before pulling anything off because you can break some of the clips, meaning it'll never... There we go. All right. So this one took a little bit of more effort, but we were able to get in there. Now we want to carefully move the top. All right, the top has nothing connected. Now, I'm going to be real careful here. Lift it up like a book, nice and gentle, because we have three connectors going into here. We have the battery, we have the screen, and we have the um, daughter board PCB. Usually best to just unplug the shortest one first. And that appears to be the battery, right? Alright, on the screen. Disconnected. Let's just take a look real quick. It looks like we have a piece of pretty dense foam and then we have silicone rubber that, like the GMK 87, doesn't cover the entire bottom, just portions of it. And then we have a 3000 milliamp hour battery. All right. So today we're just sticking with stock. So I'm going to set this aside, but this is the reason that I suggest that you take it apart not only one so you learn the insides of it um, these JST connectors are not my favorite but I would if you're just very careful and patient with it and 
hopefully, I mean, even if you have just a little bit of fingernails, just scoot one end over the other. They're going to be fun plugging back in, but it can be done. But when you're going to install the switches, um, I would say have the PCB out because this is such a flexi plate, you're going to struggle with them, especially the first time um, going in. Now, like I said, I do recommend first going through, preferably using a plastic tool or spudger or something to punch out the main holes for the center post on all the switches. But now that you got the switches, let's go ahead and load them up. But we want to support this part, which is the hot swap socket, with our finger while we insert each switch into it. That way we can ensure that not only are we going to be going straight in, um, not bending the pins and punching the right, punching the holes in the right spot, but we're not going to damage or push the uh, socket off. So, um, because there really should be something more holding a hot swap socket than just two solder points, but that's neither here nor there. So today for this keyboard, I um, went ahead and decided just to go with a known switch, a known quantity, we could say. A trusty milky yellow. And I'm just going to go ahead and load these up and then we can put everything back together and get to the rest of the build and see what we think from there. So we've got all the switches in, and as tempted as I am to buy it, I'm going to stick to a stock build for right now. I think I'll go ahead and do the longest one first. I don't have much nail, but as, as long as you got enough to push it in there, then you should be good. That one's in. Battery, which is the shortest one. That's why I leave it to last. Alright. Oh, hey, it came on. I did not know that I had. Oh, I guess I did switch the switch. So, I'll turn it off, but good to know that everything's working. So, now that we have everything plugged in, um, it does just have these, uh, I want to say, either neoprene, it might be EVA, but I'm pretty sure they're just neoprene um, gaskets. They're just strips, but there is flex, not a ton, but there's definitely flex. I'm sure if we removed some of that stuff from the bottom, we'd probably get a little bit more. All right, now that we have that loaded up, let's go ahead and clip the top back on here. Keyboard, make sure that it's all snapped in. That way we have a nice even build. Alright. Now for keycaps. Hmm. Try to stick to cherry for keycaps, so how about recently got these. They're called record. I've never seen them before. Die sub PVT keycap set and should have. Alright, they have the smaller shift. They have. Uh, yeah, I think we can make this work. So. Now, do you 
these keycaps. These keycaps are 1.3 millimeters. They're die sub uh, PBT. There's three trays of them. And they're black, and some of them go off to the screen. And we don't have any extra space bars, but thankfully we don't need to sing in here. So here we are with the GMK 81 loaded uh, with the record uh, keycap set. It's cherry profile. It's um, 1.3 millimeter thickness body and um, they're die sub PBT. But the legends are, are decent on them. I like the colors. I like the combination. I have not seen this before, but. I was one of their sales. They have, they seem to have sales all the time, and I was like, oh, I'm getting a good deal. I think I got this set for. I had seen it before, and it was like 27, but I think I got it for like 18 and change. So I was like, yeah, I'll pick that up, and 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 I like it. And it's uh, actually, even though it's not amazingly kitted, it works for this situation, a full size. Most 65 and 75 percent um, should work with this, but. For what this keyboard sounds like stock, I mean, it just continues to blow my mind that we see these keyboards that are released, I mean, even barebone, like I said, this one I picked up, I want to say, I want to say it was $30, um, but it's like a moving target, like the GMK67 when it first came out, I saw it for $60, I think, but then, you know, I was able to pick one up for, I think the cheapest was $17. Another time for like 19 and many times for 20 something, $20, $22, $23. So uh, this one I got for 30 and it's new. I want to get the GMK 67S, like I said, and when that one comes down in price, I'll pick one up. But for what you're getting stock, I mean, if you've been in the hobby for any amount of time, you're probably going to have an extra set of switches and keycaps. So, I mean, though you might just want to buy some for here. Like I said, those yellows, uh, the Get Around Milky Yellows, I actually have set up for something else, but I had enough to spare that I could load it up on this one. I just wanted to see what it would sound like with, you know, an average thickness keycap set uh, that's die up that many people might, you know, have something similar. So they bought off of Amazon or AliExpress like me, or, and with um, the milky yellows, which should be a commonly known switch. But that's why I went over the PET part, um, punching it out. As long as you're careful when you open up and make sure to get all the clips you know, undone before you pull it up and then just have some patience pulling out the JST cables, they will come in and out. You just have to be very patient and kind of scooch them out. Much easier to put back in. But so you, that you can support the back of the PCB, especially the first time that you put switches in it. I mean, afterwards you wanna switch them out, I think you'll probably be okay. You might have to use the flat end of a spudger on some of them to bring up the plate, but you're already gonna have those holes punched out. So it's going to be a lot easier moving forward to get switches in there. So like I said, probably best first set of switches you do after punching out the middle post with something plastic, not something metal. You don't wanna go through and poke too hard and get to the battery, which is right around here. Something plastic, you don't have to worry about it and it really doesn't take that much force to poke through that plastic. So that being said, wow, what we can get for so little money. I mean, a bare bone, there was no way to get a bare, uh, uh, a keyboard under, you know, a plastic keyboard in stock a year ago that sounded this good stock you know maybe with a lot of tuning and it would come close but this even the scratchiness these are brand new uh, yellows so that they haven't been worn in so they, they got that scratchiness but to me I even I even enjoy that that scratchiness that it has um, but 
I, I there's still I have I modded the GMK a couple of times the GMK I modded the 67 a couple of times I still have to do the 87 um, like I said I've got two coming and then I'll do this one I've got to get a hold of the GMK 67s which is basically a screen instead of a knob and it's a 65 percent so um, I like how they look they all uh, feel just right that rubber silicone I like that it has a pocket for the USB 2.4 receiver and it's magnetic um, I like the wedge with the curve uh, profile of it um, but let's go ahead and plug it in and take a look at these RGBs. I probably should have done that before adding the switches, but I mean the keycaps. But we should still get a little bit because the milky still allow some of that light to come through. And here we are plugged in um, as with the GMK 87, and I'm gonna guess the 67S as well. You can do function and enter to cycle through two different animation screens. And that time will update when you actually open the client to update the uh, screens on your computer. It just takes it from your Windows system time. I'm on a Linux computer right now, so it doesn't do it. So, um, I mean, I've got to say that, in my opinion, this is, <laughs> had I, had this been one of my first options to buy, um, I would have been very happy though I would have I mean I don't know I know a couple mods I'm gonna do to it I'm gonna see how much it affects it um, but it's just the value that you can get the amount of keyboard the way that it sounds you know stock straight out of the box um, some just some gator on yellows I mean it's it's pretty crazy I mean even the and I mean the stabilizers were dry I haven't touched them this is completely stock this is how it comes so um, one thing I didn't check but it should be because the other ones are as well oh never mind stabilizers do come lubricated one I was looking at did not look like it was, but this one definitely is. And yes, there is holes on the PCB for screw and stabilizers. I don't know if there's enough clearance, but the holes do exist. So very likely going to be able to install screw and stabilizers when we come back to it. The screen shows you if we have caps lock, so it's a caps lock indicator. Tells us we're in the wired mode. Like I said, the date that'll all update when I plug it into the Windows uh, client and use the uh, software. I will be making a separate video on how to update the, the uh, screens. Um, it'll be short and sweet. It's pretty simple. Um, but for what you get for the money, because I mean this should be around thirty dollars. I wouldn't pay really much more than 40 bucks but even at even at 40 50 dollars it's a good deal but it's available cheaper so i mean a good trick is to keep if you're going to buy from aliexpress um keep searching for it search for what you're looking for the gem k81 there's 87 search for it several times just come back to the site close out the page come back and hit super deals and wait till you see it listed in super deals and then it should come through let's start coming through um, and you'll see at a lower prices so that or just keep searching they 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 will have flash deals like you have 20 minutes like, all right buy it now you can't even add it to the cart you just have to buy it now but just make sure I always tell you know people to make sure that the store has been around at least for a few months and that they have a 90% or higher positivity rating and you're more more likely to be dealing with a reputable shop and I think AliExpress has really cleaned up their act and gotten rid of a lot of what at first was just really bad actors let's just say on AliExpress I think they've 
they've minimized that. I haven't dealt with, I haven't had a major issue in quite some time. So, anyway, um, it's the same graphics that came, or the same animation that came with the, um, with the GMK87. So, and this, the build, this one, the build is definitely closer to the GMK87 uh, than it is with the uh, GMK67. So the GMK67 is a little bit softer, but the GMK67S um, seems to be following more of this design language than that split. So, we will see. I, I do believe I, there is a GMK98 on the way. I don't know for sure, but... That's kind of uh, it, it's just a rumor on the grapevine, so it, we may be looking at one of those here soon enough, which I think would be interesting too. I wonder if it'll come with a screen and a knob, or either, or not, neither. It'll be interesting to see, but with this construction, we do have Via. Like I said, I will include links below um, to my Dropbox. For the VIA files, you can connect the VIA over Wired or over 2.4, but it's a different file. And um, the first two layers are going to be Windows 0 and 1, and then layer 2 and 3 are going to be Mac. So that's where sometimes people get like, what, what's going on? Um, and it's not a full VIA implementation, but it's, it's going to be good enough, I think, for about 90%, maybe, maybe 80% of people that use Maya. Um, it's going to take care of your macros, your basic rebinding, your function layers. So um, you're just not going to be able to send key codes directly. QMK key codes just aren't going to go uh, because it's not a QMK via implementation. I really don't know. My guess is that they're just capturing and replicating uh, the communication protocol that Maya has with the keyboard for certain things. But that's all that I can tell. I don't know for sure. Anyway, um, it's just another entrant in the GMK keyboard game, and I, I gotta say, I like it. <laughs> this uh, colorway on the keycap set uh, record, I like how it works with the, uh, the different breathing colors, the rainbow, different breathing colors. It's not a rainbow flag, but it's just... I don't know, it works pretty good. I like it. So I'm going to leave you guys with a stock sound test of the GMK81 with Gatoron Milky Yellows and this record PBT keycap set. Until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on. <laughs>